All right, welcome everybody. This is episode 162 of Coffee with Marcus. Today we're going to talk about options versus stock. Is options trading actually better than stocks? And uh, you see, if you're wondering whether you trade stocks or options, then this episode, this video here is for you. And there's no simple answer for that question because it depends on many factors and we will talk about all of them today. So are you ready to get started? <laughs> Let's do this. This show is about real money and real trades. I'll show you the trading strategies that I personally trade, the tools that I use to trade my own accounts, and we will talk about the right mindset of a trader. Now, talking about mindset, I'm going to show you how to create SRC profits. And SRC stands for systematic, repeatable, and consistent, because that is the key to long-term success in the markets. So if you are sick of all the hype and empty promises and you want to learn trading strategies that actually work, then click on like right now and let's get started. All right. So good to see you here. Yeah, I promised you that I will start a, a video series of options for beginners. And today is part one where we'll talk about options versus stock, which one is better. And, uh, so when I thought about it, I actually came up with seven topics that we will cover today to answer the questions, is option trading better than stocks? So we will talk about what is the difference between buying stocks and buying options? We'll talk about which is better, buy a call option or to buy the stock outright. We'll talk about whether options are more profitable than stocks. Number four, how much money do you need for options trading? Number five, can you actually lose money trading options? Number six, what are the risks of option trading? And number seven, can you really make money trading options? Anyhow, so that's what's on the agenda for today. If you're ready to get started, then uh, click on like right now and uh, let's do this. So um, first of all, let's talk about what is the difference between buying stocks and buying options? Well, let's keep it simple. When you are buying a stock, you're actually buying a share of the company and uh, you're getting paid dividends in order to do this. Now, when you are buying options, you're only buying the right to buy or sell a stock as a specific price on or before the option expires, but you don't own the stock yet. And as you'll see in a few moments, options trading requires much less capital than buying a stock and therefore it's very attractive, but it can also be very confusing. And my goal for you today is to make it simple. So let's actually start with an example. And uh, this is when we go to which is better. Is it better to buy a call option on a stock or to buy the stock? And uh, so in order to do this, I want to use an example and uh, the example that I want to use is Apple. So uh, let's take a look at this. The ticker is AAPL. And uh, if you're switching over here to the iPad, then you see that right now Apple is trading uh, somewhere at around uh, 129.01. Now, um, as I was preparing for this example, I thought, you know what? Let's actually think about uh, if it would be trading at uh, 128. Let me just try to draw, draw a straight line here. Um, oops, there we go. Perfect. One straight line coming up. There we go. So uh, I wanted to say it's trading at 128, 70. Uh, it's close enough, right? Uh, it, just for this example here, it's a little bit easier because I prepared a little bit of math and otherwise I'll get confused and I'll completely throw it off. Anyhow, so let's assume that you're bullish on Apple and expect Apple to go higher. So you could buy 100 shares of Apple, but it would come with a pretty high price if you're looking at uh, the current price here. So let's go back to our handy dandy notepad here and uh, write down a few things. So if you're buying Apple and you're buying 100 shares of Apple, uh, at a price of uh, 128.70 per share, this would be $12,870 that you would have to bring to the table. Now, if you have a small account, then this might be too high of an investment for you, which is absolutely fine. The good news is you can trade options instead. 
You see, when you, when you buy a call option, you have the right to buy 100 shares of Apple at a set price, which is called the strike price, on or before the expiration date of the option. And uh, let's actually take a look at an options chain here. And uh, I just noticed that I did not sign in to my trading platform, but I'll do this right now so that we can take a look at, uh, at an options chain. And I'm bringing this over here to the other screen that I can share this with you. So this is what an options chain looks like. And again, if you're new to trading options, all of this might look confusing, but the good news is it doesn't have to be. So um, again, we want to focus on buying a, a call option, which is everything here on the left side. And uh, today is, uh, what is today? May 6th. And uh, let's just say we want to buy a call option that expires June 18th. So we have 43 days until this option expire worthless. And uh, let's just say that we want to buy an option at a strike price of 130. So the price of the option here, as you can see, is, is around $4. So uh, let's write this down. Let's go back to this here. So if we buy a call option, Okay, with a strike price of 130 that expires uh, June, what did we say, June 18th? Yes, June 18th. So we can do this for $4. Now again, options come in 100 packs. Uh, so your investment to buy this call option is only uh, $4 times, again, 100 pack. So it would only be $400. So um, let's actually talk about this. Why would you buy options instead of stocks? Now, as you can see, <laughs> it is much cheaper, right? I mean, compared to the original investment that we have here of 12,870 to buy 100 shares, uh, you're only paying $400 to control 100 shares. So as you can see, only 3% of the money that is required. And because of that, options can be, or options are actually more profitable than stocks. So let me explain. This is where we move on to the next thing. As you see, we can go through this fairly quickly so that you understand the basics here. Now, again, uh, since you're bullish on Apple, you expect the stock to go up. And uh, let's just switch over here to the handy dandy iPad. And let's say uh, that you would say over the next few weeks, you expect the stock to go up to 140. And again, right now it's trading at around 128 something and 129. So if this is happening, if Apple is going up to 140, let's take a look at the profits that you would make trading shares and trading options. So switching over here to our handy dandy iPad, uh, notepad. So uh, you, you bought 100 shares of Apple at a price of 128.70. Uh, and now the price is $140. So your profit uh, on this is actually 140 minus what you paid for 128.70. So this would be $11.30 per share times 100 shares. Uh, this is $1,130. That is not bad at all. I mean, wouldn't you agree? Because based on the original investment of 12,870, so this is uh, an 8.8% uh, return on investment, uh, which we also abbreviate with RI. And uh, so this 8.8%. So that's not bad at all, right? I mean, 8.8%, uh, I would take this. I mean, who you likes this? If you like this, click on like right now. Anyhow, so uh, let's take a look at the call option. So the call option that you bought gives you the right to buy Apple at $130 uh, on or before June 18th. So if Apple shares move up to 140, here's what you could do. You can buy 100 shares of Apple at 130 because that's the right that you have and then sell them immediately at 140. So let's take a look at this. So trading options and uh, we want to look at, at the profits here. So if the price is 140 and you can buy them for $130, your profit would be $10 per share. Now, since you're trading 100 shares, so this is per share, and then uh, we take this times 100. So this means it is $1,000. So 
first of all, it seems that this year is less. And also keep in mind that uh, you paid $400 for this option, right? I mean, this is where let's make this red because this is what we paid. So what we need to do to calculate our true profit, we need to take the $1,000, subtract the $400 that you paid for this ride, and you still make $600. That is not bad at all. Um, so your, your total profit then is $600. And uh, let's actually mark this in green since I like colors and I hope that you too. And uh, if, we, if you look at our initial investment that we had, so we take the, the $600. Let me just bring up my, my handy dandy calculator here um, because now we are looking at $600 and if we divide it by $400 that you had to bring to the table. So this means uh, that this is a 150% return on investment or as we abbreviate it, RI. Now, as you can see, this is much, much more than the 8.8%. That is not bad at all, right? Uh, but uh, it's way higher in terms of return investment. Now, keep in mind that uh, you made more in absolute dollars trading the stock, right? But the money that you needed to make this profit for the option was less, uh, much less. Here you needed $12,870. And here for the option, you only needed uh, $400. And that is why your RI is 150% when trading options versus the 8.8 return when trading the stock, even though the stock price is exactly the same. What do you think? It's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> so before we move on, let me know, is, is this making sense at all? Because if it is, uh, do me a favor and click on like really quick this way. I know that you're enjoying this video and uh, we can move on in our series, Options for Beginners. And what is better, trading stocks or trading options? So now the key question is, how much money do you need for options trading? Now, as you can see from the previous example, you need much less money when trading options versus trading stocks. So when trading options, you can get started with as little as $2,000. So um, you can get started with as little as $2,000, which I think it is pretty cool. Now, check with your broker about the minimum requirements uh, to open an options trading account. But uh, if you have a smaller account, trading options, especially when you're buying options, might be much better for you than buying a stock. Now, the next question, which is super important, can you lose money trading options. And we, we have to talk about losses because losses happen when trading. So let's talk about uh, the, the risks of option trading here and focus on can you lose money? And, and the question, uh, the answer is yes, of course, you can lose money. You see, in, in the example above, you could lose the whole premium that you paid for the option. So you can lose the whole premium that you paid. And uh, here in our example, this was $400. And uh, in which case would you lose it? Well, this is what you lose it if the price does not move above the strike price of $130. So uh, let me just uh, bring up here a different color and say our strike price here. Oh, that's not a different color. Come on, where is my blue pen? There we go. Okay, so our strike price was 130. So if until June 18th, when your option expires, the price of Apple remains below because uh, it is trading here in this range and never breaks up about it. I mean, many things can happen, right? In this case, your option expires worthless. And, uh, and here's why. You see, with the call options, you have to write, uh, you have the right to buy 100 shares of Apple at a price of 130. Now, if Apple is trading below 130, let's say it's trading here at uh, 128, you, you, don't want to uh, you don't want to exercise your right to buy Apple at 130 because then you would pay more for the stock than you would if you bought it right away. Is this making sense? So if Apple stays below 130 until expiration, your option expires worthless and you lose the premium you paid for the right to buy the stock. Now, uh, next question, which is super important. Can you lose more than you invest in options? Can you lose more than the premium? Well, 
Here's the good news. When you are buying options, you cannot lose more than the premium that you paid. And in this example, uh, it was $400 and this would be your maximum loss. However, when you're selling options, that's a completely different story. And uh, we will cover this in a, in a different video that I'll do about uh, buying and selling options. But uh, just in summary, see when buying options, which is the easiest way to get started with most people do, the maximum amount that you could lose is the premium that you pay when buying the option. All right, let's move on. Uh, we are making good time here. We're making good progress. So let's talk about the risks of option trading absolutely do this. So are there any risks of option trading? And yes, of course, there are risks when trading options. So um, let, let's talk about this. Uh, so a hey, selling options can be dangerous. Okay, so uh, you, you know that I love selling options and uh, this can be dangerous if you're not knowing what you're doing. So as you've seen, buying options, your, your risk is limited to the premium you pay when buying the options. However, as selling, there's a lot more risk. In some cases, you can have unlimited risk. And we will cover this in detail in a different video when we talk about selling options. Or uh, if, if you're super curious and you want to get started right now, uh, I've written a book uh, about the wheel strategy. It's all about selling options. I'll also have a playlist. I'll link to it in the description description here so that you can take a look at this. Uh, but this is a good book, $4.95 on my website, $24 on Amazon if you would like to jump ahead and do this. However, if you're more comfortable with buying options, then take a look at the Power X strategy. This is about buying stocks and buying options. So this would be the right strategy for you. Anyhow, so let's go back. Uh, so selling options can, uh, can be dangerous. Uh, also buying out of the money options, buying out of the money options, uh, which are so called OTM options. Uh, it's pretty risky because the probabilities are very, very low. Let me show you an example. So if, if we look at, uh, for example, an option uh, Apple at, at 160, you see that it is uh, super low priced. It's only 10 cents. See times 100, you would only pay $10. And in this case, you would make money if Apple moves above 160. But the odds of Apple doing this uh, before June 18th are rather low. In fact, this is where we can use something like the Delta that gives us an idea of what the odds are. And you see here, the odds are pretty much 2% of that happening. Uh, so because Apple right now is trading at what? Uh, around uh, 129, $130, you get the idea. So going to 160 is quite a stretch. And, and this is where most tr new traders say, oh my gosh, this is so cheap. Let's buy this option. And if it goes in the money, I can 10 X, maybe even 100 X the option. Um, but it's often not happening. So just uh, be aware of this, uh, that buying uh, out of the money options is risk because you have low probabilities. Now, uh, it's important that you know what you are doing when trading options, because when trading options, there are a few more things to consider. First of all, there's calls versus puts. So you need to know what does what, right? I mean, call options, you buy them when you expect the call, uh, stock to go up, put options when uh, you expect the stock to go down. Uh, as we have just talked about it, there are different strike prices and there are strike prices that are ITM in the money, ATM, uh, and uh, which is at the money and out of the money. Then you have uh, you have seen it here that there are different expiration dates and uh, this is where the stock needs to make a move before the expiration date here. Super important. And then you also have these uh, pesky Greeks that you might heard about. And uh, these Greeks, uh, I just showed you one. It's uh, the Delta, it is Gamma, it is Theta, it is Rho and a few others here. Uh, there's also Vega, right? And you might not know what this means. So therefore, it is super important that you're getting used to the basics here uh, so that you know what you're doing. Because here's the deal. When you have more things to consider, there are more th possibilities 
to make mistakes, right? So, uh, because for example, accidentally, you might buy a put instead of a call, or you might sell a call instead of buying it. So ma make sure that you understand all these factors uh, before you start trading options. By the way, we'll talk about the Greeks later. In fact, I did a video on uh, the Greeks. I believe I did a video, at least I planned it. If I find it, I'll link to it in the description. Okay, so, um, Let's also talk about, since we are talking about the risk about options, are options riskier than stocks? So let's talk about this. Are options riskier than stocks? And uh, the, the answer here is yes, absolutely. Uh, because it's easier to lose all of your investment if the stock does not do what you want it to do. So let, let's, uh, let's continue our example from above. So uh, let's talk about trading stocks. And uh, let's say you bought Apple at 128.70, as we said earlier. And now let's say that Apple uh, drops to $125. So in this case, you would lose $3.70 per share. And since you're trading 100 shares, so we're taking this times 100, uh, you would lose $370. Now, based on your initial investment, uh, that uh, what we did, what did we say? 12,870, uh, that is only 2.9%. So not really a big deal. So let's just uh, underline this here, the trading stocks, because now let's talk about trading options. So trading options, this is where you bought the call option for $400. So the premium that you paid was $400. Now here's the deal. If Apple does not move about 130, if it goes down to 125, uh, 25, you lose all of your investment and this would be 100% of your investment. Yeah, of course, the, the investment is much lower than the 12,870, but instead of losing only 2.9%, uh, as you would when trading stocks, you would lose 100%. Now, again, uh, let's, uh, let's keep in mind that when selling options, you can lose a lot of more money. So uh, selling options can be very, very profitable. In fact, uh, I, I've made more than uh, $75,000 in less than uh, five months selling options, and that's on $250,000 in cash, which gives me $500,000 in margin. But, 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 it's also very, very risky. So uh, you see, compare options versus stocks like riding a bicycle and, and, and riding a motorcycle. You see, riding a motorcycle gets you to your destination quicker, right? And, and it can be more fun, but it's also much riskier than riding a bicycle. Get the idea? Okay, so now let's talk about uh, what everybody is asking me all the time. Can you really make money trading options? And uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, this is what I do and I'm doing it here on YouTube. Uh, you might have seen my account update. So I started trading a, a $250,000 uh, cash account, which uh, is uh, $500,000 in margin. And I posted many, many updates here. And uh, all of these updates, uh, they are in a specific, a specific playlist. So I'll link to the playlist here so that you can look at this. And you see there are many advantages to trading options and it's absolutely possible to trade money with options. Um, but you see, the, the, the key question is, is there a safe way to trade options? And uh, yeah, you need to know what you're doing and you need to have a solid trading strategy. And my favorite trading strategies that I like to use all the time is, as I said, the wheel option strategy. This is for selling uh, options. So it's a little bit more dangerous. Um, I want to say for more advanced traders with larger accounts. So if you have an account of at least $20,000 in cash, which gives you $40,000 in buying power, I think this is good for you. If you have a smaller account of maybe five or $10,000, take a look at the Power X strategy. So these are two strategies that you can trade with options. Uh, again, for beginners, I think that the Power X strategy is better. And uh, then if you're more experienced, the wheel strategy, can be very profitable. Now study these, find a strategy that uh, you understand and then practice it on a simulator. And uh, when you're ready, start making money with this. Okay, so another question that I get all the time when we talk about uh, can you really make money trading options is can option trading make you rich? 
And you see, when, when trading options, you, you often see these returns that we had here earlier. You often see return of 150% return on investment. Uh, you, you might see 200%, 300%, and you see, therefore, it's, it's easy to believe that options trading can make you rich and double, triple, quadruple, 10x your account. But keep in mind, with these high returns comes high risk. Yes, of course, you can make 200 or 300% when trading options. And as we just talked about it, you can lose the whole premium that you paid when trading options. So you can absolutely lose 100%. So uh, keep in mind, right? Higher returns means also higher risk. So please don't think of options trading as a get rich quick scheme. But when used correctly, options trading is perfect to grow a small account into a bigger one. Or when you have a bigger account, it's great to trade for a living. Okay. So uh, let's actually talk about a, a quick summary here. So let's sum it up. Should you trade options? For me, this is a yes. And sometimes I get asked, should I trade stocks or options? Well, what's better? Well, here's what I say. Why not do both? I mean, there's a place for it. Uh, you know that I like to use the, the PowerX Optimizer. Uh, it is the software that I use every day uh, to find the best stocks and options to trade. And sometimes it makes sense to trade the stocks and sometimes it makes sense to trade the option. Don't limit yourself. You see, there, there's some people who say, oh, you only should trade options. No, I mean, trade stocks, trade options. Also, don't say, oh, I'm, I'm only trading stocks. I don't want to trade options. No, don't, don't limit yourself. I mean, that's, a, that's the worst thing that you can do. You can do both. This way you can get both of uh, the best of both worlds. So is, is options trading worth it? Yes, it can be very, very rewarding. So let's just uh, go back and see where we stand. Uh, so today we wanted to talk about options versus stock. Is options trading better than stocks? Well, as you have seen, it has many, many advantages. And if you're not trading options yet, I highly recommend that you start looking into options. This is why I'm doing this series, which is a, a series of options for beginners. Today was part one. I'm planning to have probably eight parts to the series. So uh, we'll get started over the next few Coffee with Marcus sessions here. Uh, so if, if you found this interesting, then uh, do, do me a favor and click on like. Also, subscribe to this video and hit the little notification bell. This way you don't miss it when I'm going live or I'm publishing a new video. All right, now since you're here live, uh, let's actually talk about this and, uh, and see what questions you have. And uh, I just need to move over here to the other screen. And uh, so good to see uh, everybody. And Jay says, why do they say sell in May and go away? And who are they anyway? Well, this goes back. There's a stock traders almanac and the stock traders almanac actually looked back, uh, I think over the past almost 100 years, might have been 80 years, not quite sure. And uh, this is where they, the statisticians, mathematicians and statisticians, is that a word? Anyhow, people who love statistics saw that on average, the stock market underperformed between May and October. So they found out that uh, between October and April, uh, the markets did really well. And uh, then it, it uh, got usually uh, uh, less exciting because we had the summer months and everybody was outside and taking vacation. But you see, over the past few years, this is no longer true. So this is where make sure that you trade what you see and not what you think. Because think about last year. I mean, let's uh, let's just go back here to the handy dandy iPad where we had all these things, and uh, let's take a look at the at the S and P. Uh, and I'm bringing up a weekly chart here. So let's take a look at uh, the period between May of last year and uh, October, right here. So what do you see? It was nicely going up, right? Uh, so. Let's actually remove this. Uh, let's see what happened there the year before. See, I think it's a, it's a great question. So here, um, let's take a look between uh, May. So here we have May, okay? And then here we have October. Okay, so last year or uh, the year before, 
uh, I believe this was 2019. So 2019, it was true. So it has been performing better in the beginning of 2019 than not doing anything and then picking up again. So anyhow, Jason, this is uh, where this comes from, right? The the sell in way, uh, sell in May and go away. It's more for long term investors. Uh, great question here. Okay. Good, good, good. Helena says uh, they are anyone who is not us. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, good. So good to see everybody here. Uh, so uh, Stephen is asking, where can I buy your wheel strategy book to read on a Kindle? Uh, on Amazon, just go to Amazon. It's there. I think it's $4.99. Uh, don't know. Sometimes Amazon is running a special and it might be a dollar cheaper. But hey, $4.99, you can read it on a Kindle or you can get it on our website and we'll be happy to ship you a copy. Kindle is probably faster. You have it right away. Uh, depending on where you are in the world, it might take a few weeks. If you're in the US, we were shipping them every day. So you might have it as early as next week. Okay. Good, good, good. There's Tinashi, uh, new here. Don't have idea to trading, but very interested. Well, I hope that today was helpful for you so that uh, you know at least the difference between stocks and options here. Okay, cool. Um, Roll, any update on your 500k portfolio? I did it on Monday, three days ago. Uh, so it's here on the channel. I'll link to it in the description. We have our own playlist. So I just did it. I'm now up around $75,000. I have a quite a few more trades going on that are that are going OK. So tomorrow um, we will see what happens if I'm getting assigned or if I'm just collecting premium. So I'm planning to to do another update on on Monday again, uh, because this way it's easier to see exactly what is happening here. OK, so um, Gabe says the problem I see on options is that they do not move as much as the stock unless you buy deep in the money, which is more expensive. Yes. You see this is where it's important. I mean, Gabe, you make an excellent point. You need to understand the ITM in the money, at the money and out of the money. But you see even here, if you're buying at the money for Apple, it's only $400 versus $12,000. So why won't you do this? I highly recommend that you usually go with a delta of 0.5, which is at the money or a delta of 0.7, which is slightly in the money. Great question here. Great question. Okay. So Tulio says, any reason to cancel the power alerts? Uh, are they only uh, available to the mastermind group? I, I just found that uh, it was just too much for me to do these power alerts, right? As you know, I've been really focusing on uh, improving the PowerX optimizer. We have just released uh, two days ago, I think, or was it yesterday? Time is blurry, a uh, version 2.0. And it is very, very exciting what we have planned for version 2.1, 2.3. Uh, you know, it has a, a completely new interface, new functionality is way more accurate and more profitable. Now, in addition, uh, now that we have this, I uh, I'm planning to actually write another book. So we will do this. And uh, yes, of course, I also want to support our PowerX Optimizer users. And I'm very, very active in our private user group here, as well as our mastermind members. And uh, this were it was just too much for me. And uh, I, I realized that I didn't issue as many alerts as you were expecting. And uh, this is why I thought it, you know what? We have an excellent reputation because I'm always for over delivering and under promising. And I kind of felt that with the power income alerts that I would under deliver or maybe deliver on par. And that's not me. You see, I, I'm all for over delivering. And I just realized that I, I don't have as much time as I wanted to have. And uh, this is why I decided to, to cancel it. OK, cool. Uh, Rico says, love my PowerX optimizer. That's great. Good. So uh, after I buy puts or calls, can I place a stop loss to prevent losing the whole premium? Yes, Brian, absolutely. You could do that. And uh, this is what many option traders do. So many option traders uh, like to place a, a stop loss that is half of the total premium. So in our example, if you would pay $400 for the premium. So as soon as this dwindles down to $200, they get out. And then on the other hand, when they see that uh, they make 100%. So if the option is now worth instead of $400, $800, then they get out. And you see, this would be a healthy uh, risk reward ratio of two to one. And if you do this consistently, you make more money on your winning trades than you would lose on your losing trades. So as a rule of thumb, it makes sense to, to place a stop loss at 50% and then a profit target of 100%. Does this make sense, Brian? Okay, good, 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 good. All right. 
So LP600 says you can't make money constantly buying options. Well, it really depends. If you're uh, buying options out of the money, it will be very tricky. Um, now, options selling can be more rewarding, but it's also much, much higher in risk. It really depends, LP, uh, where you stand uh, personally, right? I mean, if you are a more experienced options trader um, and you have a larger account, it does make sense to sell puts or sell calls, right? Might make sense to do covered calls, might make sense to do spreads, right? Vertical spreads, uh, you can do this. Um, I, I wouldn't really generalize it. I, I'm all against that because I know uh, a lot of traders who are buying options who are making good money. And uh, I'm buying options and selling options and making money on both. Okay, anyhow. So, um, Bruno says binary options is a scam. Yeah, binary options is a different story. Yeah, I, I mean, stay away from binary options. Here we're talking about options that are being traded on the CBOE, the Chicago Board of Options Exchange, right? So you, you want to trade those and uh, in your country it might be different, but I absolutely agree, Bruno. Stay away, um, stay away from this. Okay, cool. So uh, let's see. <laughs> Go to your Forex guru. I'm not doing Forex at all. Tell him to show his p and I, I think in general, it's probably a good idea to, to ask uh, somebody who is teaching to show the p and I'm doing it all the time here. As I said, I, I just did a video on Monday and uh, I, what did I have uh, like $75,000, 74,000 and something. I'm sharing how much money I wire out of my uh, trading account into my checking account and I'm very transparent here. So LP, if you haven't had a chance and you would like to see this, um, just look at the previous video. I'll link to it in the description and I have a whole playlist where I'm just going through my P&L every single month. So again, I've done eight account updates and we are only four months into trading. So I'm usually doing them every two weeks so that you see where I stand here. Anyhow, uh, oh yeah, okay, there it is. Yeah, absolutely. So just look at it every other week I'm doing it because otherwise if I do it twice a week, it kind of gets boring, right, doesn't it? I mean, up to you. You tell me what you want to do. Okay, good, good, good. Selling puts, JP says, uh, all other types I end up chasing, worrying, uh, correcting or losing. Uh, maybe just me, but selling puts work. You see, JP, here, here's the deal. Find a strategy that works for you. Trust me, there is enough people who are buying calls, who are buying puts, and they're making a lot of money on that. And then there's people who are selling calls and who are selling puts. Uh, so this is where, as I said, try it on a simulator, find out what works for you. Everybody's different. Think about it this way. I, I mean, in school, I, I mean, are you, equally, are you equally good in all subjects? Usually uh, there's people who are better at, at math and maybe science. And then there's people who are better at uh, at arts and crafts, right? I mean, if I if I look at my kids, my son Julius, uh, he he's a math genius. He's really really good at math. And then on the other hand, my daughter Vivian, uh, she is so creative, right? And uh, she she can write. She writes amazing stories. She can draw, and uh, she's doing okay in math. And this is where we are all different, uh, JP. This is why I, I would say find out what works best for you. Okay. Anyhow. Good, good, good. All right. So Marion says, uh, don't seem to have the like button on my phone here. Yeah, if you're watching it on the phone, you probably see the chat. So you need to close the chat. Then you can hit like and uh, then you can open the chat back up if you want to. So that's how it works. I know on, the, on a phone, there's not too much going on. And oh, Jeff just said it. There you go. Thanks, Jeff. Really appreciate it. Jeff is our mastermind. And uh, so is Kathy. Thanks for helping out here. Okay, cool. So Maritza sold uh, some uh, puts for next Friday, collecting premium there. Okay, you can do this. So uh, Trader X says, if you sell a put for next week and then the stock goes up or down, does the put always follow directional and what direction? See, this is where I did a video on selling puts. Um, might be a little bit too much to go in here. Anyhow, when you're selling puts, you want to make sure that the stock is staying above the strike price uh, that you are selling. Uh, let me actually uh, show you a few examples of, uh, of some trades that I have going on here right now. So as an example, uh, one of the trades, I'm just going back here to a daily chart. Uh, so one of the trades that I have going on is AG. So with AG, I sold the strike price of 14, right? And this is where uh, I'm selling. Uh, let's actually see, let's uh, go back here to a red marker. 
So this is where I sold a put at a strike price of 14. So in order to keep all the premium, and uh, this expires tomorrow, AG needs to stay above 14 uh, by tomorrow. So AG can go up, AG can go sideways or even slightly down. It can go down from 15.93 right now to $15, $14.50, even $14. So uh, absolutely no problem at all. Let me show you another example. Another example here is, uh, is ARC. Yeah, we can talk about ARC. So here I sold the strike price uh, as you can see of 105 and uh, right now ARC is trading at 108 after market it is trading at 110 so as long as ARKK stays above uh, 105 and goes up sideways or even slightly down as long as we are staying above 105 I'm collecting the full premium when selling puts. Um, who asked this? Trader Rick, is this helpful? And again, this just very briefly, I'll link to uh, a playlist in the description. Uh, it's about the wheel. Really take a look at this. I'm going into much, much more detail there of what exactly I'm doing. Okay, so uh, Nick Gaming says, how do you know how much you'd make on an option? This is where I'm using uh, the software, the PowerX Optimizer. And uh, let me just show you because I think it's, it's important. It's a great question here. Uh, let me just bring it up here. Uh, quickly share my iPad. So this is where I have uh, the, the wheel analyzer. And you see uh, with the wheel analyzer, let me just uh, let's take a look at ARKK, for example. I did Zillow, I did AGS. Yes, all of these are trades that I'm currently in as well as uh, LVS. Uh, you see right here, it shows the total premium uh, that I'm making. So here, $595, $550 here. Uh, $400 here, $852 here, and then it shows me how much money this would be annualized. It, it shows me my, my minimum premium, uh, my maximum premium that I need to get here, right? Then I can fill in the premium that I got. So this is where for me, it is super helpful to do it this way. Again, that's a, the PowerX Optimizer. It's a software that I use for both of the strategies for either buying calls uh, or, or buying options and selling options here. Okay, cool. All right, Tim received the second edition of uh, PXO and the first edition of the strategies. Yes, so you have both books on your shelf. You can uh, put them on your desk like this. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, anyhow, anyhow. Okay, so Mike says, uh, how soon should one trade the wheel option when you're trading uh, the PowerX program in the beginning? I would say trade on a simulator for two months. And here's why. In two months, you will see all sorts of different market conditions. You will see a market that is going up, a market that is going sideways, a market that is going down. So I would say practice on a simulator for two months. And I know this sounds so boring. Why, why would you practice on a simulator, right? I mean, most people want to trade live right away, but trust me, it will be so worth it because have you heard this, that most traders are losing money? They say that 90% of traders lose 90% of their money in the first 90 days of trading. You know what? Trade on a simulator to avoid that. Uh, make the experiences and this way it, it will be much easier for you to make money once you do this. It, it's like a pilot. I, I mean, a pilot first trains on a simulator before he goes into a real plane, right? So do this, do this anyhow. Good. Uh, Roll says, right fell below $8 briefly today. Yeah, I know, right is, uh, Jesus. I'm, I said it earlier, I'm, I'm getting sick and tired of, of talking about right. Yes, I have it in my portfolio. Yes, this is a super bad trade. Yes, that's where I'm flying a rescue mission. Yes, I am sure, I'm 100% convinced because I've been doing it previously that I will get out of this with either a small loss or a small profit. But right now, it's like, geez, so oh, Pete's. Yeah, anyhow. Uh, so Nick Gaming, the difference between a call and a put is very simple. When you're buying a call, you expect the stock to go up. When you're buying a put, you're expecting the call to go down. I'll do another video on this, uh, probably in this series, uh, Options for Beginners. I'll talk about this in detail. Also talk more about this Delta and the Gamma and the Greeks and the strike price and expirations. So I'll do that. I'll do that oh, for sure. Okay. Uh, can I use a stop loss for selling a put? You could, I wouldn't, uh, because this is where 
uh, with the fluctuations that you have throughout the day or throughout the week, you might get stopped out even though you might be okay at the end of the week. So I believe it's a little bit more risky to use a stop loss here um, based on a, on a put uh, when selling a put. Okay. Um, yeah, Chad says it's, it's, it's good to have at least $20,000 uh, to open a margin account so that you have $40,000 in buying power. When selling uh, options, this is a, this would be good. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Uh, so Joe says I'm getting assigned on Uber at 51.50 tomorrow. Um, well, what minimum should I look for when considering whether it's worth selling a call? Uh, great question. This is where you use the calculator. So what you do here is that uh, when you're doing it tomorrow, <clears throat> right, you, you fill it out here. So you say the, the ticker, right, uh, you enter Uber and then uh, the stock purchase price in your case would be 51.50. How many shares? Uh, let's just say that uh, you got a thousand shares and now you're looking at strike prices, for example, um, at, at a 53 strike price. And you want to do this for next week and uh, this is where you see you know what if you would get here 20 cents um uh, you probably get uh, get probably 50 cents for this i would have to look it up but this is where you see the the wheel calculator here helps you tremendously by showing you uh right what is the the minimum that you should get to make it worth your while here and then it shows you okay it is green so we are good here you are making enough money on this one anyhow is this helpful? Does this help at all? Joe? Uh, so just use the wheel calculator and uh, it'll be super easy. All right. Hey, I, I hope that you found this helpful today. Uh, I love the Q&A with you. So enjoy you being here live. If uh, you're watching the recording, click on subscribe, hit the little notification bell. This way, YouTube will have a message pop up whenever I go live so that you can also ask your questions here live. Uh, also, please feel free to share this video with anybody who might find this helpful. And I will see you in the next video. Okay, take care, everybody.